I don't know if you guys can actually hear the excitement in my voice, but I'm extremely excited. Throwback gang, welcome. It's finally time to take a trip back into Miami during the Vice Time era. I don't even know what Vice Time era is, but I know Miami and Vice are related. And welcome guys to the remastered trilogy edition of GTA Vice City. I'm so sorry that I could not bring this series to you earlier because for us PC players Rockstar decided to royally screw us over. We couldn't preload until release so that's why it's taken a bit longer and I apologize. So for me personally GTA Vice City is the first ever Grand Theft Auto title I played. I played it at 10 years old and yes that's one of the facts of living in my country you don't have to be mature 17 plus to play such titles. So. For all of you living in advanced countries, take that. Anyway, so um, I'm going to be following some of the gameplay that I did. Well, not that I did, but I'm going to be tapping into my memory of some of the ways I played back as a kid. So according to Rockstar's official site, they didn't change much from the game. Well, from the original game, they did anyway. Basically speaking, all they did was upgrade the graphics and also update the way the game plays so it now basically plays like Grand Theft Auto 5. They did add waypoints which I guess is alright. Not that you basically needed them for these 3D titles because the maps aren't that big and getting to your current location to the location of a mission isn't that hard. But overall I believe it's going to be a nice experience and some of these games really did deserve a remaster if you, especially if you look at how much people in the community were creating these mods for them if you are new here welcome my name is billy i like to play old games hence the entitled big billy throwbacks if you are going to enjoy this episode please say. like subscribe turn on yeah. the bell notification for all the good stuff head, uh, and let's get it going now what are we going to do, Sonny? Let's treat him like an old friend and keep him busy out of town, okay? We've been talking about expanding down south, right? Vice City is 24 karat gold these days. The Colombians, the Mexicans, hell, even those Cuban refugees are cutting themselves a piece of some nice action. But it's all drugs, Sonny. None of the families will touch that shit. Times are changing. The families can't keep their backs turned while our enemies reap the rewards. So... We send someone down to do the dirty work for us and cut ourselves a nice, quiet slice, okay? Who's our contact down there? Ken Rosenberg. Schmuck of a lawyer. How's he gonna hold the city gooch? We don't need him to. We just set him loose in Vice City. We give him a little cash to get started, okay? Give us some money. Then we go down. Pay him a little visit, right? See how he's doing. I cannot tell you how much happy I am that they actually have fingers. That thing used to bother me, even way back. I understand the engine wasn't good to support that kind of graphic graphics, but my goodness, it's so good that they have fingers. Now, I've talked to the suppliers, and they are very keen to start a business relationship. So, if all goes well, we should be doing very nice to ourselves, which is, you know, good. So, a little backstory. This GTA Vice City is one of the older games that came out, but there is a game that's called GTA Vice City Stories, so it basically plays in a world that happens before Vice City, which we're playing right now. Sorry, I did not want to talk over the conversation. So this guy... Victor Vance is the main character we play with in Vice City Stories, the guy holding two briefcases in the red shirt. The model in Vice City Stories are a bit different than it is right here, but you have to understand Vice City was created before Vice City Stories. 100% pure grade A Colombian, my friend. Let me see it. The greens? 10s and 20s. Used. I think we have a deal, my friend. <laughs> so is his voice actor. They're different in both games. Head out of the gutter for one freaking second and face double shit in my face. Go get some sweets. 
What do you think of this? I'll drop by your office tomorrow and we can start sorting this mess out. So, um, welcome guys. You are now about to start our own play. I'm really sorry. I'm going to have to turn off the radio because YouTube is going to strike me worse than lightning, I guess. But um, the soundtrack in this game is excellent. Absolutely amazing. I might, if you guys are interested, I'm going to leave uh, links to YouTube videos with some of the soundtracks so that you guys can listen to them. But, um, yeah, the driving controls seem a bit awkward. But then again, they did not change anything in this game. They simply made it more aesthetically pleasing. Um, so, um, some background to this game. We are playing as Tommy Vasetti. He's part of the Corelli family. Um, when I bring to you the GTA 3 gameplay, you're going to see some other Italian mob families in Liberty City. That's one thing that I also like, how you can just sprint into a marker and Tommy continues sprinting into oblivion. <laughs> it, I always find it very Tommy. funny. <laughs> I know, I know. You're just overwhelmed with emotion. Fifteen years. Seems like only yesterday. I guess the voice the acting here is me. excellent. This time for the family is no piece of cake, but the family looks after its own, okay? So how'd the deal go down? You sitting on some white gold? Look, Sonny, we were set up. The deal was an ambush. Harry and Lee are dead. You better be kidding me, Tommy. Tell me you still got the money. No, Sonny. I don't have the money. That was my money, Tommy! My money! You better not be screwing me, Tommy, because you know I'm not a man to be screwed with. Wait, Sonny. You have my personal assurance that I'm going to get you your money back, and the drugs, and I'm going to mail you the dicks of those responsible. Hey, I already know that. You're not a fool, Tommy, but I warn you, neither am I. If it was anybody else, you'd be dead already. But because it's you, because we got history, I'm going to let you have it. Hey, Sonny, you got my word. I'll be in touch. So as I was saying, there are normally some three crime families in the Liberty City world, universe, if I can put it that way. So the Forelis are one of them, which our main character Tommy Vasetti here belongs to. Another one is the Sindaco family, and another one is the, Col the Leone, or the Colleone family. I think it's the Leone family. So um, uh, the Forelis are now taking over after the Leones have been completely obliterated by Claude. Claude is the main protagonist we play as in GTA 3. So uh, look out for that gameplay also coming to the channel very soon. Um, I have been contemplating doing all three games at once, but I feel it will be very confusing. So I'm going to focus on Vice City first, then uh, San Andreas, then we can finish with GTA 3. I have been sitting in this chair all night with the lights off drinking coffee. This is the disaster. I do love me some we coffee so myself. These gorillas, listen to me, are going to come down here and rip my head off. It's ridiculous. I did not go to law school for this. Okay, now what the hell are we going to do? Shut up. Sit down. Relax. I'll tell you what we're going to do. You're going to find out who took our cocaine. And then I'm going to kill them. That's a good idea. That's a great idea. Let me think, let me think, let me think. Oh, there's this retired colonel, Colonel Juan Garcia Cortez. He's the one that helped me set up this deal well away from Vice City's established thugs, okay? Now listen, he's holding his party out in the bay on his expensive yacht, and all of Vice City's big players are going to be there, okay? I have an invite. Of course I have an invite. But there's no way that I'm going out there sticking my head out the door. No I way. I told you, out. shut up. I'll go myself. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Hey, I like 1978 too, but you know, this isn't going to be a beer and strip or two. I mean, no offense, but I think that you might turn heads on the <laughs> runway for the wrong reason. What's wrong with the way I'm dressed? Okay, look, here, stop by Raphael. Tell him I sent you. He'll make you look respectable. Okay, go, come on. Come on, I like his shot, man. Oh, I think he is. Now I got to dress like a chump as well as hang out with them? I like this shirt. I agree, his shot is really stylish. Okay, so Ken Rosenberg is the contact for the Forelis in 
Vice City. But a little backstory to him. The three families that I mentioned earlier, the Sintacos, the Leonis and the Forellis, they basically got into a business agreement together to start a mafia-run casino. And because they did not want the families fighting, they put uh, Ken Rosenberg in charge as the middle ground between the three families. So any decision that was made, it was supposed to be by Ken Rosenberg. But as with everything that is mafia related, each family was trying to control him. And at this point, it's the Forelis who are in big control. Or rather, it's the Forelis who are in control of the mafia run casino as well. So um, one thing that I've just remembered is I'm actually playing these games in chronological order. So by City. Uh, San Andreas, then GTA 3, but that's not how they were released. They, in terms of release, it was GTA 3, then Vice City, then San Andreas. But when it comes to the timeline, how I'm playing it is the correct order, if I can put it that way. So the story should make sense in the end. So the purpose of this mission in its totality is to introduce us to some of the main characters in the entire game they are all located well, in this one yard I understand you so are on the behalf of Mr. let's meet them me the, the voice acting in this game is excellent extremely excellent so i'm not going to use the bike it's handling is atrocious let's just use this vehicle turn off the radio quickly Will you be working for my father? so So these initial missions, basically speaking, is still part of the tutorial introducing you to how to play the game, some of the mechanics and some of the things that you can and can't do. I want to try go for a swim. I already know that they have not made Tommy an Olympic swimmer, but I'm still going to try it. Just to see him drown in HD. Probably might do that in the next episode though. So we finally made our first $100, we are not broke anymore, moving up in the world I guess. And basically speaking we have to start from the bottom after losing a lot of money and a lot of keys of the white powder. We are probably going to have to find them out before for Sony comes for our neck. Let's save up a bit so that we don't lose our progress. So after the introduction part of the game, um, the thing is I do understand now that we have waypoints which are really, I guess they are beneficial. Okay. I think I'm just going to have to turn down the radio volume altogether so that I don't have to keep on manually turning off the radio. But anyway, um, as I said, I'm playing this from memory. I, I do have a good recollection of where pretty much everything is so for heading towards some mission waypoints and such i don't think i need a lot of sorry i promise i'm not a bad driver this car just handles horribly but as i'm saying um i don't really need the waypoint as much because for me i do remember how to get or how to make my way around certain areas this guy is really stressed. This town and in prison. We need a lead from the streets. Okay, let me think. Let me think. Let me think. Ah, I got it. Okay, there's this limey, some music industry slime ball. Goes by the name of Kent Hall. Anyway, he's got his nose so far up most of Vice City's ass that if anybody knows the whereabouts of 20 keys of coke, it's this guy, all right? He's always at the Malibu. I'll go pay him a visit. Take it easy now. It's 20 keys of white powder, though. I don't know what these two are talking about. Okay, so a couple of things. Um, driving in this game is still a bit hard. There are some vehicles which are better handling than, than others. Um, you do not lose any speed if you drive off the grass or the off road, so it saves uh, quite a bit of time. Um, weapons are available know where to find them i will be showing you some of the weapon spots and where to find some weapons some armor some 
health icons and a lot of other stuff but one thing that you should remember unless you have the minigun <laughs> as I just ran into oblivion into the club, the first ever club I ever visited. Looking for some English guy, Kent Paul. Kent Paul, mate. Yeah, I'm the governor, Andy. I'll sort things out. You know what I mean? I'll sort you. Whatever you want, I'll get you. Hello, governor. Sorry. Oi, 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 oi. You Kent Paul? I'm a friend of Rosenberg. 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 Ambulance chaser. That guy could defend an innocent man all the way to death row. <laughs> Give another drink, bub. What is this? Basically, saying he's a bad lord. 20 keys and a lot of cash. Drugs, mate. It's a mug stain. What do you know about it? Oi, oi, well, what I was coming to was there's some chef come crumpet shifter who fills that kitchen of Hotel and Ocean Drive. He's been looking real pleased with himself lately. You could go and check him out. I will. And I'll be seeing you around. Go and walk away, you mug. I knock you spark out. Give me a drink. And where's that slut? So, as I was saying, there are probably very many different levels of weapons. Um, I still believe the minigun is the most powerful weapon in the game. But one thing about Rockstar games, especially in this era of gaming, that many people don't realize is one of the best weapons in the game is actually a car. Because, um, the people you are trying to eliminate will never have as much hit points as a actual speeding vehicle so right now we are supposed to go fight this chef i'm really not in the mood of fighting him so i'm simply going to run him over because as i said apart from the minigun a car is the best people and i have really screwed it up lovely i could simply edit that part out but i want you guys to see that i'm actually not that great of a gamer that's why i'm not part or interested in joining the speedrunning community because i suck and i missed it you know what i'm also going to leave that part in as well so um we are going to basically turn around and approach it from this side but i'm going to show you what i mean by the vehicle probably being one of the best weapons in the game and that's it we are done with the guy so of course there would have been a conversation and i would have had to go into a fist fight with him but as i said nobody has time for that and now the game oh, makes it look like we were in the battle of our lives that should make him real chat you want some too hey chill I want what you want, brother. Oh, yeah? Well, what's that? Your green and my dead brother's white paper. Unfortunately, you just silenced our lead. Accidents happen. Get lost. Hey, hey, whoa. No need to go all long range on my ass. The way I see it, we two hombres in a strange town. We need to watch each other's back. My back's just fine, brother. You sure about that? Here, take this. Follow me. So this is part of the tutorial on how to use a gun and where to get a gun. As I said, the first few missions in this game are basically tutorials on what you should and what you shouldn't do. Where to find things and where not to find things and that sort of thing. So now we are going to ammunition so that we can see where we can get our weapons. As I said, the waypoint added is really nice but it's not the fastest way to that gun shop so I shall be showing you that it's easier to just simply go straight and make one turn to arrive at our destination. As I said I do not mind the waypoint especially in San Andreas which was one of the first games to actually have a huge map so I think it will be beneficial there but for this one I don't think it is. So you can buy weapons as the tutorial is actually showing us right now but there are weapons and armor scattered around the city as well so you don't really need to buy them as such and I'll be showing you some of the spots where you can pick them up so that you don't have to go all around buying weapons especially because we only have a hundred dollars to our name so 
buying weapons doesn't seem like a good investment strategy or a good money spending strategy so anyway guys as i get completely destroyed um i'll end this episode here i want to say thank you for the support again it's been tremendous and i really appreciate it if you enjoyed this video please remember to leave a like a sub would be nice and i hope you really enjoyed stay safe be kind to others tell somebody you love them and i'll see you all in the next video take care